Welcome to a Toast to Truth. This is where I share the mental, financial, and emotional frustrations of being an entrepreneur. This is Season 8, Episode 5, Esports, the Emerging Digital Frontier. So I have no special guest co-host in this particular episode. I am doing this based off of research and trends. So let's get into today's question. Why should I consider a new market? Now, my oldest nephew is really into this. I don't really know too much about games. The last time I played a game was Sega Genesis. So that was probably my first one. So if you know anything about the old Nintendos and Sega Genesis, yes, early 90s or mid 90s. So Yeah, that's about all I know when it comes to gaming. Mortal Kombat was my favorite game. I played Super Mario Brothers, Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, a lot of those early games. I even played Organ Trail on the computer, one of the first popular massive hits as far as computer games. But Mortal Kombat was like my ish. Okay, that was my game. I was... Sonya Blade and I was always ready to like fight somebody because I was always going to defend my (laughs) crown as the best Mortal Kombat player. So I'm getting my alumni, uh, what's this alumni publication or whatever. They send it each quarter. I graduated with my bachelor's in liberal studies from Texas Wesleyan University It is based in Fort Worth, Texas, and it was actually a good school. I liked it. It's small. It You pretty much know your professors because the classes are small, and it it worked for me, being an introvert and (laughs) being from a small town. It was not overwhelming. I did enjoy it. I learned a lot. A lot of the experiences I had on campus. Are very, have been very useful um, now that I am a full-time blogger. I want to talk about esports because, like I said, my oldest nephew is really into it. He's, you know, trying to educate all of us, the whole family, on this. Now, he's 12, okay? So he's trying to educate us all on this, and we're just, like, shaking our heads, okay, okay, because we don't know nothing. Uh, well, my brother gets it, but the rest of us were like, um, okay, you know, However, I spent some time when I was offline last year because I like to take my social media breaks and I took about, mm, I think, eight weeks last year. And during that time, I learned about esports and Twitch and all of these new platforms, you know, that are really coming into a huge market. And it seems like it's surprising that everybody's like, where did this come from? But the gaming industry has actually been around since I was a kid, probably before that. I'm sure people who play, what is that, the Atari or whatever that was from the 80s, like it's been around um, for some time, but now it's like online. But again, Oregon Trail was a hit. Like if you don't know Oregon Trail, then you're probably too young to be listening to me. (laughs) But gaming is now a $1 billion a year. Um, That's what it's expected to be for 2019. So I'm giving y'all like the most recent and up-to-date facts because, again, in my alumni publication that they sent us, I'm going to be sharing some stuff from that, but they have given us stats on this and it's very First of all, parents, if you have kids, you want to be listening to this. If you are an entrepreneur, you want to be listening to this because I'm going to tell you how you, your kids can either go to college and or get paid doing this, or if you are an entrepreneur, how you can make money from this as well. Okay, so let's start with esports. Now, I don't know all the games. League of Legends is one. That's only because I see it here in the um this publication um overwatch hearthstone smash brothers melee smash brothers ultimate 
FIFA and Madden. Okay, so those are the games that are being played by my alma mater. Now, let me start here with the kids. Well, they're not kids. They're, they're going to college. My alma mater, Texas Wesson, has an eSports varsity team. They actually play, and they have given out scholarships, and they have about 35 members on the team. Of those 35 members, 12 have scholarships to go to college, okay? So if you are a parent and your kid is into gaming, there are scholarships out there, and I'm going to give some stats in a moment. So we have an eSports team here at uh, Texas Wesleyan. Go Rams. <laughs> and um, they have given out 12 new scholarships. They have their own little space. You know, they have locker room and decorated it all nice. Esports is a $1 billion a year industry. They have a global audience of more than 380 million fans who watch the competitions online. And some of the top competitors can earn about $500,000 a year. That's probably just from gaming. That's not endorsement. That's not selling merchandise. That is probably only from the winnings of gaming. Okay, if that makes sense. That's kind of like poker. Um, high stakes poker and, and, and those things. Like you, you make your money from the winnings, but you can also make your money from endorsements. You can make your money from selling merchandise. You can make your money from, um, um, what are those called? Appearances, just like any other athlete. Okay, so these are these are real athletes, people. I want you to get that. Now, this thing is called the National Association of Collegiate Esports. Okay, there are 80, there are more than 80 colleges and universities in the U.S. who have varsity esports teams that are part of the National Association of Collegiate Esports. Texas Westland is one of them, and I believe they are the only Texas college or university in that particular association. I will double check as I continue sharing this information. Now, in Arlington, Texas, in their um, convention center, I believe it's their convention center, they are building a, yes, in their convention center, they are building a $10 million esports arena. And there are four professional teams. Now, what are the professional teams in Arlington? Oh, Lord. The Dallas Cowboys, the Dallas Mavericks, the Texas Rangers, and the Dallas Stars. Those are the sport professional sports team. And then I know they have the Texas Legends, which is like um, a D-League uh, basketball team. So they, they have professional sports in North Texas, people. And I am a Mavericks fan. Everybody knows I'm a Maverick fan. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I just want to make that clear for anyone, anyone who is new, who did not know how important that is, that everyone knows that I am a Dallas Mavericks fan. Okay. So back to eSports. Texas Wesson has given out 12 scholarships for students to go to college, get a degree, and still play the game that they love. Okay. Just like a basketball um, we just got our football team back like a couple of years ago. So yes, we were without a football team for a while, but they are back. So we have football, uh, basketball, volleyball, soccer, baseball, softball. We have table tennis. Like when I was in undergrad, our table, table tennis team was like the best. Okay. So don't, don't skimp on the table tennis there because we were running like the national NAIA championship, like year after year for table tennis. So don't, don't, you know, look down upon the table tennis team because the Rams were doing it. Okay. So here at Texas Wesleyan, they had to really work hard on this proposal to get it accepted. Now, the person, Eugene Fryer, um, he is the person who brought esports to Texas Westland and he brought on Mike Brown who is class of 2017 to coach the team and they went around to like different um, high schools and plays really recruiting it did take a minute because I'm sure parents were like nope not my kid they going to school for real for real to learn <laughs> to learn not to be playing no games 
Now, they quickly filled up the 12 scholarship slots that they had by like October. Okay. Now, this is the fall. Now, I'm reading from you the fall 2018 uh, alumni publication. So, by October 2018, they already had the 12 slots for the scholarships filled. And then they had 37 players for seven teams. Okay. And they were still holding tryouts. So, by the time this went to print, I'm sure there are probably more than 35 members on the team. So, they have seven teams. Now, they also want people to understand that this is a sport. Just because in some people's eyes, it's not a physical sport where you're like running, jumping and stuff like that. From the research I've done over the last year about esports, it is still a it is still a physical thing. Like they still have to work out in a sense because of them sitting for long periods of time. Like people who work at a computer desk all day, and also your eyes because you're looking at the screen, and your men you know your your mental um, capabilities. You're you're literally in one place for hours, hours, hours at a time. So it, there's there's still a physical and mental aspect like any sport with, with esports. Okay. So what else am I going to share with you guys? Okay. One thing, one thing that they stated is that the team will need, and I'm going to list all of these and I, and I want you to listen carefully. The team will include coaches, managers, equipment managers, social media specialists, bloggers, videographers, commentators, broadcast personalities, computer scientists, podcasters, event planners, accountants, and more. That's for a college team. How many of those positions that I just said you do in your business or that can be a business? Again, we're going to talk about that in a minute because I'm a blogger and a podcaster. So, you know, again, this new frontier. So those are things that um, we'll talk about later in this episode. But those are those are things that your company could be providing to professional esport players. And if you are a college student or you have a college student, you can tell them that they can still do what it is they want to do, and then just focus on esports. You know, not everybody can work. For the NFL, not everybody can work for the NBA. Not everybody can work for professional soccer or baseball or any of these leagues. But there's vast openings for people to work in esports because it is still emerging. is is still at the precipice. It's still at the beginning stages. So there's so much growth there. So I'm going to share some random facts that um, they shared in our alumni publication so okay so league of legends never heard of the game but here are the roles if you were playing that game marksman support juggler tank bruiser mid laner oh my god these are like (laughs) when you play basketball you know point guard shooting guard pose wing okay so similar similar i don't know the positions in uh football so that's why i use basketball some more random facts. E- each esports game has a regular season and an off season, just like sports. Other sports. When is season, teams compete once a week. Okay, that's very similar to uh, football. All competitions are streamed live on Twitch. Twitch is an online platform. Tournament winnings go to support the program. So if you are in college and your team wins, the school gets the money, not you. Like all the other sports, okay? If you are a professional esports player and you win, your money comes to you. Administrators are looking into adding an esports academic major or minor. So I'm, I'm assuming that's at Texas Wilson. I don't know if other um, schools are looking into that, but that's like NASCAR. You know, there are some schools that provide different degrees related to NASCAR, okay? So people can go to college. They can learn whatever it is they want to learn um, with that degree. And then they can go work for NASCAR. It's like a pit crew leader or, you know, someone in the management of 
the race car team. I don't know much about NASCAR, but I do know that they offer um, degrees related to that. Um, and so if you are interested in NASCAR, you can do that. You can look it up because I don't know too much about that. Okay, so let me do some esports spot numbers. 80 plus U.S. colleges and universities have varsity esports teams. Uh, Texas Westland has awarded $25,000 dollars in scholarships to um, the 12 people so far with the East uh, sports team. Um, Nine million eSports scholarships and aid has been awarded in 2018 in the United States. Let me read that again. Nine million. So that means kids are going to school and not really going into debt. Okay, parents are listening. There are four professional esports teams in North Texas. There, the esports stadium that is opening in um, Arlington, Texas, it is ten million dollars. That's how much money they have put into it. The annual salary for some professional players is half a million dollars. And in 2019, the expected global revenue for professional esports will um, hit one billion dollars. There are 1,500 esports student athletes nationally. The highest scholarship awarded to an esports um, student athlete is $20,000. And the current range for most college esports scholarships is $2,000 to $5,000. Now, I'm sharing from North Texas because that's where I'm getting the information. I don't know anything about Houston, and I didn't really care to research when I had all this research sent to me. Yes, there are girls on the team, uh, at least at my alma mater. There are girls on the esports team, so it is not just for boys. So if your daughter likes gaming, which I know there are a lot of YouTube girls out there who are on Twitch and who game and stuff like that, if they are a are of college age or you know want to go to college they have that opportunity to be on an esports varsity team now this is this is the college part okay i wanted to start there so that parents understand that this is an opportunity for your kid to go to school they don't have to get a degree in esports or anything they can get a degree in whatever it is they want but they can go to east uh, they can go to college and play esports either on scholarship or just on the team have that experience, just like people go and play tennis or basketball. They either go on scholarships so school is paid for, or they go and they do it because they want that experience and that gives them something, uh, building blocks for them when they are on their job or when they're on their business. Like sports, being a former athlete myself, I made varsity track when I was a freshman. I played varsity sports in high school. I played sports since I was in third grade grade okay I have played team sports since I was in third grade so I understand what it takes for each person to contribute on a team and how you have to be very very aware of yourself and know what you're doing so that you can contribute so as a whole the team can do what it needs to do to win these are skills that you usually can't pick up and learn in other places. That's why a lot of team projects and collaborations in the workplace are horrible. You can always tell who never played sports because they have no idea what it means to collaborate so that the bigger goal is attained and reached. Um, so esports is a good opportunity to really give your child some skills that they may not get otherwise. So that's all I'm gonna say about college. I'm a, um, we're gonna take a quick sip and we'll be right back and I'm gonna talk to all of us entrepreneurs on how we can get ourselves into this emerging digital frontier. So I'm very particular about what I recommend and use. As a loyal user over the past five years, I chose to use Gumroad as my e-commerce platform. It's great for digital creatives like me and you. I have watched it transform to be more user-friendly 
which helps when we just want to upload our work and begin selling in less than five minutes. I've also used it for memberships, ticket sales, consultations, and digital training videos to name a few ways to use the platform. So far, they've put $175 million in the pockets of creators around the world, only taking a 5% cut. Not bad. Would you like to join an e-commerce platform that brings in that type of money for its users? Go to gumroad.com backslash invites with an S to sign up today. Okay, so we are back, y'all. Now, we are going from the collegiate to the professional. Now, there is this article, and I'm going to link it up in the show notes. There's this article on Quartz at Work, and it was published, you know, December 27th, 2018, and it's talking about esports players are burning out in their 20s. So, if these people have been playing since they are 11, 12, 13 years old, that's when they're starting, they could poss- that's about 10 years, right? That, that's about a decade of, of playing this, and they're burnt out. So earlier I talked about, you know, the mental thing, physical. Marathon video game sessions, they do take a physical and mental toll on people, okay? Um, I know the research when I did on YouTube, some of these people are literally in the same spot for like 12, 16, 18 hours. You know, they are they are glued to the screen because they're practicing or they're playing Whatever the case may be, they're not eating well, so they're probably eating junk food, which is around them, that takes physical toll. If they're sitting somewhere for hours at a t- time, they have, um, they're not being physically active, so their body is going to react in a negative way. If they're staring at a screen and they're forcing themselves to focus on something, and you know that's going to take a mental toll. So for those who are in the mental health or sports psychology or sports therapy, any of those, eSport players can be a new um, type of clientele that you work with, okay? So that's something that you can consider. Like I said, I'm I'm going to link up this article so you can read it yourself, but... What I would say is if you're in the mental health industry, look into reaching out to esports players as potential clientele so that they last past their 20s in this industry Um, or help them mentally transition from player to maybe they can become a coach or a team owner or, um, you know, some of the other positions that I talked about earlier, which I'll get back to. Oh, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I Did I mention team owners and I didn't say anything about that? I absolutely did. You can own a team. So anybody who's like, I want to own a sports team. There you go. Esports is a sport. It is legitimate. You want to be a sports owner. You get in there and you figure out how to become a sports owner. It's probably way cheaper than owning football team, basketball team, soccer team, baseball team. I don't know the mother sports. I think rugby is becoming a big thing here in the United States finally. I'm not sure. But yeah, you get what I'm saying. Like, here's an opportunity. You want to be a sports team's own, sport team owner? Go into esports. So I've already said, if you're in the mental health field, if you're in the like physical trainers, you reach out to these esports people so that they start getting physically active again so they're not just sitting in their chairs for like hours at a time mental health physical trainers or you know nutritionists help them learn how to have healthy food around them if they're going to be sitting in these chairs for hours at a time playing um these games while while they're competing you want to own a team that is an opportunity for you to really be more than an entrepreneur, you are going to be like a boss for real because you're going to have to have staff, you know, and let's get back to some of this staff you're going to have to have. I'm going to reread it. Coaches, managers, equipment managers, social media specialists, 
bloggers, videographers, commentators, broadcast personalities, computer scientists, podcasters, event planners, accountants, and more. Okay, so I don't have time to break down each of these opportunities, but if you're a coach, you know what a coach does. If you're a manager, I believe you are like the person who manages the team, like money-wise and, you know, schedule and all that stuff. I don't know. I'm just giving what I think at that point. Okay, equipment manager, you make sure everything is working properly and they have what they need to practice and they have what they need when it's time for competitions. Social media specialist. Hey, maybe you are running the social media for that esports team. Maybe you are the company that says, hey, outsource your social media. You don't have to worry about hiring an in-house um, person. We'll be at every competition and we'll we'll live tweet, we'll post, we'll live stream, whatever. But um, everything's pretty much live streamed on Twitch. Uh, bloggers, write up about the players. Write up after the competitions. Talk about all the aspects of the industry. Like, really put some work into that. You know, that's same with journalists. Like, really report on what esports are. Educate people on it. Videographers, I mean, that's a given. Create short little clips. The best of the top 10 best game thing. I don't know what they're called, but when people do well in the games, what are their top 10 best moves or something like that? Commentators and broadcast personalities. Somebody needs to be given play by play of what's happening for people like me who don't know about the game. Like, oh, he he hit that person. I don't know. I'm thinking more to combat people. Okay. Like, give me, give me a break. But, you know, people, they need to be interviewed by people. If you are a journalist, if you're an on-camera personality, or if you have your own YouTube channel, reach out to some of these competitions, reach out to the different leagues and ask, hey, can I be media? I will, I will do every competition on my YouTube channel. I will interview, you could probably do some licensing deal or something. Okay. That's a way to get paid. I'm really trying to help y'all get paid. Okay. There's opportunity here. Computer scientists, y'all already know I cry when it comes to anything technology, so I don't know anything about computers. However, I know that you can be creating websites. Computer scientists, I'm sure these are people who are creating apps and and, and different software, okay? So these are things that they can use. Apps for the players or, or for, the, for the players to have connection to their fans, software, maybe software to monitor their, um, how they're practicing and how they're doing, how they're improving. Okay. I'm, I'm really trying to give y'all some help here. Podcasters, you know, do a recap of every competition, interviews, the players, interview the, the coaches, the managers, the team owners, talk about the competition. I mean, like there, if there are W W E podcast, why can't there be esports podcasts, event planners? These people are going to have team events. These people are going to have championship, uh, uh, events, uh, kickoff of a new season retirement. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but there's opportunity there again. Event planners, reach out to these esports players and teams and leagues and, and see how you can help. Accountants, everybody got to have somebody to help them count their money because everybody's not real good with that. I know I have a CPA, even though I be watching my money like a hawk. Like, let me think something's wrong. I'm calling the bank. Could you please explain this transaction to make sure I did it and no one else? No. Okay. <laughs> So they need accountants. They need financial planners. If they're burning out, according to this article, if they're burning out in their 20s and all they've done is play and they did not get a degree because degrees are now just becoming a thing with esports, letting them go to school and play, what are they going to do? Do they want to go back to school? If they don't want to go back to school, what are they going to do? Financial planners, that's where you come in and you're like, let me make sure that when you leave esports and you retire, that you are prepared for life after, okay? Because that's what any athlete, a lot of athletes go bankrupt. 
after they leave because they don't have anyone telling them what to do correctly. There's a lot of scam artists and a lot of people out there taking advantage of athletes. But if you are a good person and you really want to help these people, if you're a financial planner, reach out to the esports players and really help them set their um, life up after they finish playing so that they can start a business or they can, you know, get a job or whatever the case may be. But between that time of leaving esports and starting that next chapter in their life, they're not going broke. Okay, so financial planners, that's that's a real big thing. One thing that I didn't say earlier, but it does teach them skills, soft skills like teamwork and leadership development. Okay, so I know there's a lot of leadership coaches out there who help entrepreneurs and athletes and different things like that. You know, maybe you could do like a seminar for teams and and help them get mentally prepared. You know, there are mental coaches. So for for Olympic athletes, for the countries who can't afford it, there are mental coaches who help them get mentally strong so that when the pressure of millions of people watching them play, it does not get to them. Now, the countries that can't afford it, sometimes their athletes let the pressure get to them because they have not been taught these skills to block out the noise. So if you're like one of those mindset coaches or something like that, this could be a new clientele for you. I'm a blogger, but and I blog about events. Would this be something I look into? Mm, I don't really blog about sports. Sports. Um, I did cover the NBA All-Star Weekend when it was here in Houston some years ago, but I'm also not going to not consider the opportunity, okay? If there's an opportunity for me to cover an esports event, and I think it would be interesting because, again, remember, I like covering events where it's going to have a unique experience for the attendees. So if they're trying to reach people who are not into esports, I may consider covering that event. Um, I'm a podcaster. Well, hello. I'm just doing this episode right here on it, so I'm good with that. (laughs) But what I do, like recaps, you know how people do show recap podcasts or they do podcasts after that week of, of basketball or football and they recap the teams and stuff like that? You can do that with your podcast. I used to do social media management if I was still doing that, because I did have people on my roster that I hired, I would put together a proposal in a heartbeat and reach out to some of these teams or these leagues and say, who's handling your social media? You know, some of these people may not even have dedicated people or they have one person and that one person is overwhelmed managing all the social media because this is still pretty much a new league. Okay. And I'm sure there are multiple leagues within the whole category of esports. So you want to look into that. Now, like here in the book, it says that there are four uh, professional esports teams in North Texas. I live in Houston. So if there's four in the Dallas Fort Worth area, so North Texas is Dallas Fort Worth area, I'm sure there are some esports teams in Houston. I'm sure there are esports teams in other cities around the country. If not, do you have to be present in a city uh, to offer some of these services? Not actually. You don't have to be there if you are, say, a blogger or a podcaster or computer science, maybe accountant. You may not have to be in that city per se to still offer your services, but coaches, managers, equipment managers, videographers, uh, commentators, broadcast personalities, you may actually need to be in that city because that to me is more face-to-face. And oh, think about the coaches. Like if you are, like I said, like a leadership trainer, Maybe you should have leadership training seminars specifically for coaches in the esports league. I mean, I'm giving y'all some ideas and I really hope you are taking into consideration and thinking about it because there's this is a whole industry, a whole untapped industry. 
that you can be tapping into before it becomes hot. You know how some people wait till all of a sudden everybody thinks it's hot and popping and then they want to go in there. But by that time, everyone has already secured their place. So why don't you get in there and secure your place? All right, so I think that's all I got to say because, I mean, I don't know too much about esports. I really don't. I'm giving y'all what I have researched, not what I know. So this is probably one of the very, very, very few times where I am giving (laughs) research and not firsthand experience other than my 12-year-old nephew trying to really explain esports to us. And we're just looking like, we look like we don't know anything <laughs> when he and then he has he knows the terminology and I'm just shaking my head I was like oh my god I'm so old that I can't keep up with um what kids are doing so I would say let's go ahead for the final toast so the final toast for this I would say is to consider looking into this new digital emerging market. Don't close it off because it's not something you know specifically. You know what you know. If you are a blogger, you know blogging. So pitch that. If you are an equipment manager, you know that. So go in there and get that job. Whatever the case may be, don't discount the opportunity because it's something you are not familiar with. Go in there with your strength and let your strength, your resume, your track record, your results speak for you. All right. So that's all I got to say, y'all. I mean, I thought this was a good episode. I liked it. I hope you like it too. (laughs) This has been a Toast to Truth with me, Bernetta Arfredi. And this is season eight, episode five, Esports, the Emerging Digital Frontier. There were no consequences that I encountered because I have not been into this industry. However, I'm sure there are people who have um, experienced some consequences of things that they've learned in this industry. But what I want to say to you is go out there and get in this industry and then come back and share some of the things that you've learned. All right. Thanks so much for um, listening and we'll be back. For the last episode next week, we will be celebrating 50 episodes. Go to BernettaRFreeney.com for this episode show notes. BernettaRFreeney.com backslash category backslash podcast.